Hi everyone, my name is David. I'm a Coke Play Frontier from the Genesis Group. Today, I have another amazing video for you. All right, so it has to do with the economy. Uh, I'm going to make this a new series, okay? I'm going to start from one, even though I've made a handful of economic videos already, but we're going to call this episode one, starting from number one. All right, so all ado, let's get started. This is one of my favorite YouTube channels. It's called Valuetainment. All right. And uh, just check it out. I, I, I do recommend anyone to just look them up on YouTube, subscribe, you know, listen, watch, learn a thing or two. But here you have uh, the Warren Buffett indicator predicting a market crash. And then, you know, we're going to talk about what you can do to hedge against an upcoming market crash or more importantly inflation and you know me one of the methods that i am hedging against this future upcoming market crash and inflation which is a real thing it's already it's already known that we're at five percent how am i hedging against inflation that's right coke play coins all right, the Coke Play digital platform. That's how I'm doing it. So let's get started. Better story. The Buffett indicator takes the combined market capitalization of all publicly traded U.S. stocks and divides it by the most recent quarterly figure for gross domestic product. Investors use it as a rough gauge of the stock market's valuation relative to the size of the economy. The Wilshire 5000 total market index climbed as high as $44.3 trillion on Tuesday, while the la uh, latest estimate for the first quarter GDP is $22.1 trillion, putting the Buffett indicator at 200%. That reading is well above the 187 it reached in the second quarter of 2020 when the pandemic was on full swing and GDP was 12% lower. The billionaire investor Berkshire Hathaway CEO added that the indicator hit a record high during the dot-com bubble that should have been a very strong warning signal of the crash to come. The yardstick also spiked in the lead up to the global financial crisis making it a useful tool for anticipating market downturns. This is okay, so the Warren Buffett indicator, last time I hit an all-time high was, you know, in 2008. Uh, and we had a financial crisis back then. Well, is that a, another, I guess, another all-time high now? So it's a pretty good indicator. It's kind of letting you know that we have a market crash coming. But, there's something bigger than just a market crash, especially for people like us, you know, the average, the, the average Joe. Not looking good. If he's accurate, it's looking like market yeah. crash is coming. Tom, what are your thoughts Here, on this? Here's my thoughts on this. I don't care if it's Warren Buffett or Jimmy Buffett. If he's drunk in Margaritaville right now, what about this country and the world right now screams of stability, strength, and consistency? Do I think a market crash is coming? Hell yes. Okay? I don't know when. I don't know why. I don't know how. But do I think it'll eventually happen? I'm going to go with a yes. How many people that are really, really successful in the market have to come out and say, this thing's about to crash before people start going, this thing's about to crash. And that's another thing, right? So you really look at the sentiment. Everyone is saying that, you know, we kicked the can down the road too much, too far. Um, I've made videos showing just economic um, experts, experts like, Jim Rogers, uh, Ms. Professor Hankey, um, Peter Schiff, Max Kaiser, all predicting a market crash and, you know, now the Warren Buffett indicator, right? So how many people, how many people who have made millions and billions do I have to show to let you know that we got a market crash coming and big question is, what are you going to do about it? How are you going to prepare? Now, I'm going to move three minutes uh, What's the name this. from the big sh I'm trying to don't think. Here's a, here's a question for you. Here's a question for you. What is the difference between a market crashing like it did in 08 and a market tank 38%, right? I mean, it was a scary time when a market tank 38%, the whole mortgage, you know, real estate bubble that we yeah. had. Or in late 90s, when the tech bubble, the whole same thing happened there as well in Silicon yeah. Valley. What is the difference between a market crash 
and uh, major hyperinflation. What's the difference? The, the time, the, the amount of time it takes to recover. So what is the difference? Uh, let me ask the question one more time. So one is the market crashes, yeah. meaning the Dow goes from whatever, 30, what is it right now? 34,000 well, and change, 33,000 and change. Mm -hmm. So the Dow goes from 34,000 to 22,000 versus the Dow stays 34,000, goes to 40,000. But your money's But inflation half. goes up 10%. What is the difference? I, I would guess a lot of wealthy people are going to be less wealthy in a crash as opposed to inflation where it affects everybody day to day. That would be my uh, microeconomic explanation for e you. Ebbs and flows. Markets can crash and then they can rise. Inflation never goes back down. So the That's the thing that I want to talk to you guys about right there. Oh, you will never come back. That's the point. So the That's the point, right? So, yeah, you get a market crash, right? And people who have stocks and whatnot, yeah, you know, you're going to lose some money. But then it's going to go back up. History will show that it's going to go back up. But if it's inflation, right? If it's inflation, prices don't go back down. Inflation is what's going to kill the poor. Inflation is what's the tax on the poor, right? Inflation is a war against savers. Okay, the people who actually save their money, put it in the bank, hoping to use it when they retire. Inflation is a war against that. It's taxing your savings. If you're a hardworking person, your, your, your salary is capped. You're not going to make any more money. Inflation is a war against you. It's a tax against your hard-earned money. And that's the big problem right now, right? And so we see inflation reaching at 5%, okay? Uh, Professor Hankey is talking about it's going to be another 5 next year. And... You know, 2023 is going to be at least around 6%. But just remember, these are the CPI, the Consumer Price Index, is the new version. If you used the CPI back in like maybe the 70s when you had huge um, historical inflation in the States, well, if you use that, that standard, the CPI is much higher right now than probably even back in the 70s. That's crazy. That's crazy. So I'm gonna I'm gonna move this forward. The point is yeah. so, but exactly what you're doing go slow. Get a high in 2007. 28 months of economic here's what rich people do. Look at the gap. You cannot tell me this is not a Republican or a Democratic thing. It is a thing that's happening. Everybody agrees that rich keeps getting rich and poor gets uh, keeps getting poor. Yes, because there's this thing called compound interest if i'm making 12 percent a year or 10 percent a year and you keep wasting your money making a half a percent on a saving account you're right you are never going to compete you're losing against you're inflation. losing every single year so you ought to study how to so there you go right if you look at rich people and you see how they invest their money they're investing their money in something where it's going to compound an in interest but if you just put money in a bank and you get half percent, and what's the bank actually doing with your savings account? They're actually using your savings account to go ahead and give a loan to someone else where they collect a lot, you know, whatever, two, three, four percent interest. It depends on what country you're in. And then they'll give you half a percent back when they're making, you know, let's say it's three percent. I mean, man, they're several hundred times more than whatever they're giving you. So you think about that. Let's just say inflation happens. So now it becomes the hedge. How do I hedge against the market crash? How do I hedge against the market crash? Gold. What other way? Property. What other way? Ethereum. Ethereum. Now we're okay. talking. Okay. How, how talking. do I hedge against the market crash? How do I hedge against the market crash? <sighs> depending on my age, depending on my age, on where you are, maybe go look at the way your money's managed. How yeah. much equities do you have? How much bonds do you have? How much fixed do you have? Where's your money at based on your age? So you may want to have your portfolio. See, I'm, a little, I'm a little afraid because my parents have been saving for retirement. Saving, saving, saving. Yeah. They've, they've been austere for years for retirement. And they're going to save a certain amount of money that they think is going to be good enough for them to live out the remainder of their life. And if inflation hits, that money's going to be halved. Hmm. 
So and they and they're not going to have the wherewithal, and I don't want them to have the wherewithal uh, and ability to go out and be an earner into their seventies. That's not that, that I don't want that for my parents. But if they think that they're going to save five million dollars and that's going to hold them for the next twenty years, and that yeah. turns out to be two essentially two and a half million dollars in, in, uh, in equity, that that's going to be that that's that's a pretty devastating you know, thing. You know what we're learning today with the conditions that we have. It is so. That's right. So that's what I'm saying. All this inflation, all these governments, United States, everybody around the world, they're just printing, printing, printing. Every time they print, they make their currency weaker. And every time they print, what they're doing is they're taxing the money you're saving. How are they taxing it? Because the value of it goes down. So you can, you have less purchasing power. So you can buy less with the money that you work so hard for to save. And they, the government gets it because what happens is as products and services, the prices go up, the government gets to tax those companies and stores and businesses more because they are technically collecting more currency. As you collect more currency, the government gets to tax more, we take more in currency. And that's how they're taxing while they're actually, they're also taxing the purchasing power because the purchasing power of it, of your currency goes down, right? So you, you heard the guy, yeah, if my parents saved $5 million, well, with inflation, it is going to drop to half. Well, I'll tell you what, it, with inflation over 20 years, it's going to drop a lot more than half. Oh, weird what we've done with print this printing money thing is a new thing this printing money is not like a they robbed us yeah they gave it they gave it to themselves yes absolutely that's what they're doing they're robbing us they're giving it to themselves you're right they did and by the way even Stephen uh, stanley druckenmiller who's a 10 billion you know guy worth 10 billion we showed on the last podcast he says you have yeah. no idea how much money i've made during yeah. this time he says they keep printing money thinking the money flows to the poor in the middle of america it never does all the money flows all the way to the top it goes to raytheon well, See what I'm saying? All right. Because what happens is you just print a whole lot of money and you just, you're thinking you're actually giving people money and you're helping them. I mean, you are helping them. That is true. But what the government's really doing is they're helping the big companies because the big companies are the ones that's actually giving the politicians money. Right. Because you're not, what happens is you hand people, but, uh, you know, all these checks because you tell them they can't work, because you tell them they can't be productive, they can't make products, they can't provide services, and they're forced to buy products from big corporations that are providing services and making products. So you can't make anything. You can't provide any services, but we'll give you money, and the only people you can buy it from is from overseas or big companies in the country that's making products that are providing services because we allow those big companies to do it. So then you're forcing people to make the big companies rich. And that's what's happening. All I'm saying to you is the, the form of a market crash, I think if it happens, it's subtle. It's not as big as people think. Maybe a 20 to 30 percent, you know, there may be something like that, but that's going to be a time. It's not going to last a long time. The inflation, if this happens, if milk goes eight dollars, yeah. if you're buying gas, the, the, yep. if gas goes to I predict that gas is going to be ten, five to ten dollars. I predict it's going to go five to ten. Ten dollar next... gas is nuts. But that's that's but ten dollar gas is nothing to a person who has money. So I'm trying to tell you, ten dollar gas. So so it's not a. That's right. What is ten dollar gas if you have money? Because you have the money flowing to you every day like it's nothing and there's no cap to the amount of money that you're making making there's no limit to it there's nothing that's why the rich don't care market crash it's those who are not making the right decisions financially today if somebody's listening to this and they're saying well pat how do i how do i and remember the politicians don't care either because they're just printing it they're taking money any which way they can that's why they don't care. That's why they make these stupid policies, printing money away, taxing us. They fight against this. Here's what I will say. Whatever you're doing the next couple of years, make money and figure out a way to buy some assets that are not duplicatable. Give me an example of non-duplicatable assets. Can a, can a person duplicate land? No. 
Okay, can a person duplicate gold? Can a person duplicate Bitcoin? Can a person duplicate a Michael Jordan rookie card? Okay, we'll stop right there. That's what I want to get at too, right? At the end, right there. You want to get something that cannot be duplicated, that you can't make two of, right? Currencies, they more than duplicated. They, they printed that to oblivion right now, and they want to print more. And that's why I like Coke Play, all right? Because Coke Play, yeah, it's not supposed to be an asset. Coke Play coins is a currency, is a currency. But this is the thing between currencies is you want to go into a currency where you feel that that economy, that ecosystem is much more productive, is much stronger, and it looks better than another country's currency. You get what I'm saying? So a lot of people might run to the dollar because they expect the dollar is going to strengthen against other currencies. A lot of people might go to the yuan, the renminbi, the Chinese currency, thinking that's going to be stronger than the other currencies, right? Well, that's what Coke Play coins are, is a cryptocurrency. And it's a currency where I see that the ecosystem, the economy of this currency is much stronger. It looks much better than all the other currencies around it. Why? Because all the other currencies are just printing away. They're duplicating, 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 printing away in their currencies while Coke Play coins are not being duplicated. They're getting burned. There's less and less and less currencies. And you have other countries where they're just telling people not to work, we'll give you free money, forcing you to make big companies richer. But if you look at Coke Play, they're trying to get more people on the platform to make it richer, to make more products being sold, to make more contents being made and sold. So it's a growing economy. It's getting stronger. There's more productivity, right? You have lots of conglomerate companies, well-known premium luxury brand companies advertising in the ecosystem, in the platform. You have Gillette right? I know I go through this all the time, but I'm trying to show you guys something. You got Gucci, you got Burberry. I mean, you got, well, Gillette again, but Gillette is awesome. Gillette is awesome. Nike. Um, I mean, just think about it. Why would these companies be advertising on this platform? Ford, think about it. Because they got nothing else to do with their money? No. They're very smart with their money. They know where they're advertising, who they're advertising to, the group of people that they're advertising to. Sonata, right? So, you know, Coke Plate did something with um, Starbucks, Bar Burberry again. So think about that. I want you to think about that, right? And you want something, compound interest. Well, you're going to get compound interest. Okay, now I'm not your financial advice. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just telling you what I'm doing, right? And, you know, if you put in $1,500, you get 5% interest. Now that can change over time, but that's what it is now. And you can compound it because you can reinvent, you can remine again to keep adding up, you know, two times whatever you're investing on the cap, right? But it, but it just goes, you know, I, I'm working here. I'm working, right? I'm getting more and more people being part of the Coke Play family, okay? And so, and what happens is in your first line, you get 100% of their mining interest. So that way you can reach your cap, my cap right now of 2000 faster. So that the compounds more than just currently, my compound could be 7, 8, 9% or something, right? Maybe 10%. So then I'm actually beating inflation. And that's the key, is to beat inflation. If inflation's 5%, inflation's 10%, I want to be in something that's going to beat inflation. And that's what Coke coins, Coke Play coins are. And, you know, once again, I'm going to spend money on digital content. Well, why not spend it here? Why not spend it here, right? Webtoons, movies, why not spend it here and have a storage where I can always go back to use it, right? Why not, you know, I'm going to buy food. I'm going to buy um, 
products, well, why not buy some stuff here? Okay. And, and in a worst case situation, I can always use my coins to transfer it out. Right. And then put it to another exchange to change it into whatever I need to. Or even just on here, I could use CoCoins to exchange it to USDT or BTT, BTC or Ethereum, send it somewhere, somewhere else, um, liquidate it, and put that money in my bank account. Whatever the case is, I'm using CoPlay because it's legit. They have good digital contents. They have good um, premium products, right? They're not just duplicating their coins over and over and over again. No, they're burning their coins as a set limit amount. You have quality, premium, conglomerate companies advertising. I mean, everything to me so far with CoPlay tells me it's a winner. This currency is going to outperform the other currency in purchasing power. So that's, the, you know, that's it for today for me. Um, once again, you know... Right here, I'm just saying I'm not I'm not your financial advisor. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. But if you do uh, download Coke Play on Play Store, you're gonna need a recommendation code. Use my recommendation code. Join the Genesis family. We'll all help each other out. All right, everyone. Stay blessed. God bless. And Coke on.